Hello everyone, Golden Nova here. If you've been paying attention to the modern metagame, both in the TCG and in Master Duel, you'll have seen that Sword Soul is kind of the new hotness. It creates powerful on-theme synchros at virtually no cost, being supported by their own Rota, Monster Reborn, and Icarus Attack, all while having access to some of the best level 8 and 10 generic synchros the game has to offer. Mandatory plug for related video right here. But another aspect to their design that's given them even more power is their ability to lean in to worm support. No, not those horrendous reptile goo gremlins. Worm, with a Y. And it's actually kind of fascinating how well it meshes with the three major themes that worms make up. Being a synchro strategy means they share a lot of the same DNA as Yang Zing's, and because Sword Soul have a penchant for banishing worm monsters, they make for some of the best enablers Metaphys have ever seen. But it's today's topic that I feel gives Sword Soul the best compliment to its already impressive suite of abilities, Tenyi. After all, what is a Sword Soul token if not a non-effect monster? Premiering in the July 2019 core set, Rising Rampage, Tenyi are a theme that looks to harness the power of the non effect monster, an important distinction from normal monsters. See, you might think that a card like Blue-Eyes Ultimate Dragon is a normal monster because it lacks an effect. Unfortunately, that is not the case, as a normal monster has no other monster characteristics, including extra deck typing, something that was so unintuitive that they added normal to the monster's type line to help with that distinction. Check this out. However, since Ultimate Dragon lacks an effect, it's still a non-effect monster, which means it works perfectly well in Tenyi. And I'm only slightly joking, but to see how these three-headed engines of destruction match up with these draconic martial artists, let's trot the globe to see the many ley lines of of power, coalesce them into a cohesive game plan, then see if there are any students out there with the discipline to walk a path without effects. It's time to mix it up with Tenyi. But before we continue, a quick reminder to please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed my content so far. We're on the road to 100,000 subscribers, and there's no better way to get there than on our Duel Runners. Our next stop is 30k, where we'll have Jack Atlas Explained, which includes Resonators, Red Dragon Archfiend, and whatever other cards were used by the Master of Foster. We've also got our Discord, where my failures shall be logged for all eternity. I'm also on Twitch, where you can join me for viewer duels and progression polls pools. And don't forget about my Patreon, where you can gain access to my videos early, reach some of these milestones, as well as helping to determine which explained videos I make. Thank you all so much for watching, and now, back to the video. So, what's the deal with Tennies? Well, they're a series of worm-type monsters of varying levels, link ratings, and attributes, and they have a wide variety of tricks up their sleeves, provided you're playing non-effect monsters, or don't have any effect monsters. Or both, it kinda depends. They also come with a little bit of lore, though it's nothing as deep as World Legacy or the Albaz storyline. In fact, they have about the same amount of narrative depth as Scareclaw and Tiara Laments. Heck, it's even all compiled in one V-Jump article. Basically, there are these three practitioners of the Tenyi style, which draw energy from ley lines across the world, which manifest as spiritual dragons. But the Master absorbed a bit too much of Vishuddha's dark energy and went full Akuma. So it's up to our Ryu and... Um... I feel it's a bit reductive just calling the girl character the Chun-Li. Is there a Street Fighter character that fights with fans? Anyway, it's up to them to put a stop to the Berserker's thirst for power. Let's start with the main deck monsters, and despite our large toolbox, they all have two similarities. First, if you control no effect monsters, you can special summon this card from your hand. This means we can't chain one summon into another since they are themselves effect monsters, but we've got a way to get around that. And for their unique effect, it can be activated by banishing them from your hand or grave, so long as you control a non-effect monster. Importantly, it doesn't say that you have to only control non-effect monsters, as long as you have one, their effects are online. First is Tenyi Spirit Adhara, a level 1 earth tuner monster with zero attack and defense, and while you control a non-effect monster, you can banish this card from your hand or grave to target one of your banished worm monsters, except this card, and add it to your hand, which is going to be very useful considering all the banishing we'll be doing, so we can reset our abilities and summons throughout the game. And that's just for our own theme. While Metaphys will take care of being banished by themselves, Adhara can get you back any worms you banish with Taya and Shi Zhao. And don't think I've forgotten about the fact that it's a tuner, so it gives you access to all kinds of plays. Halka Fibrax, a variety of synchros, or... 
you know, our own on theme Link monsters. Sorry, I just can't square how this towering mass of the Earth's energy, the focal point of an entire secret martial art, taking the form of a mighty dragon is only level 1. Are you telling me that this is all comparable to Thousand Eyes Idol? Tenyi Spirit Mapura is a level 4 fire monster with 600 attack and 1500 defense. And when your opponent activates a card or effect that targets any number of face-up non-effect monsters you control, you can banish this card from your hand or grave to negate the activation, and if you do, destroy that card. We've got a few level 4s coming up, and this means, on top of everything else, we get access to rank 4 monsters. While you can't chain the spirit special summoning effects together, nothing's stopping you from following up one special summon with a normal summon, so if you want some more attack power than our Link 1 can provide, you can fold those two into Gem Knight Pearl to keep the non-effect train rolling. Or, you know, a rank 4 with actual utility that can put Mapura into the grave, which is very important because they are excellent material to make sure our monsters aren't picked off by removal. Normally, this protection extends to things like Effect Veiler and Infinite Impermanence, but as it turns out, that's not going to be an issue with our non-effect monsters. In fact, you could say it's Volcano Problem. Tenyi Spirit Nahata is a level 4 wind monster with 800 attack and 1000 defense, and when an attack is declared involving your face-up non-effect monster and an opponent's face-up monster, you can banish this card from your hand or grave to reduce the opponent's attack by 1500 until the end of the turn. Which will be very helpful, considering one of our non-effect monster stats is a little... Well, despite being a martial artist, they could use a little bulking up. Though it's also pretty good if we splash in some level 4 normal monsters. The ones sporting 2000 attack are already pretty hardy, but if they're backed up by Nahata, they can take down some big threats. It's the kind of power you get if you maintain a healthy diet and eat your greens. No, wait, this debuffs, so this is the opposite message. Uh, parents, if you're watching this, do not let your kids play Tenyi, or else they're not going to want to have any of that spinach. Tenyi Spirit Shathana is a level 4 water monster with 400 attack and 2000 defense, and if any number of face-up non-effect monsters you control are destroyed, you can banish this card from your hand or grave, then target one of those destroyed monsters. Special summon it, then you can destroy one monster your opponent controls. This is a great retribution effect, though it doesn't have to be destroyed by an opponent's card, so it's less retribution and more being very, very cranky. Heck, even if a monster destroys it by battle, you don't have to destroy that monster. You can pick any of them. And bonus, it's got an actually good defense stat to keep you safe from smaller monsters. Overall, this monster has a shith ton of utility. Tenyi Spirit Ashuna is a level 7 light monster with 1600 attack and 2600 defense. And if you control a face-up non-effect monster, you can banish this card from your hand or grave to special summon any Tenyi monster from your deck except a copy of itself. Also, you can't special summon monsters for the rest of the turn except worm monsters. This does mean we'll have a harder time mixing them in with general normal slash non-effect themes, but at least this means it doesn't get in the way of the more powerful themes mentioned earlier. And by being able to pull any Tenyi you want out of your deck, not only are we getting more materials, but we're also setting up banishing effects as well. It really is like a wish come true. Uh, apropos of nothing, anyone else getting some big Shenron vibes from this art? Tenyi Spirit Vashuda is a level 7 dark monster with 1500 attack and 2500 defense, and if you control a non-effect monster, you can banish this card from your hand or grave, then target a card your opponent controls and return it to the hand. This grants us some actual, honest-to-goodness removal that can help clear the way for us to get some damage in while dealing with a problem monster, or a problem back row. This can get rid of troublesome floodgates or equip cards that are making things difficult for you. That Draco back ain't gonna provide much battle destruction protection if Fateful Adventure gets un -isekied. But be wary not to indulge in this dark power too often, lest you turn into a jacked dragon warrior with awesome powers. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go indulge in this dark power to turn into a jack dragon warrior with awesome powers. Alright, that's all of our main deck monsters, now it's time to take a look at the extra deck, and there's two I'd like to go over right from the start. Monk of the Tenyi is a Link 1 Earth monster with a thousand attack, requiring any non-Link Tenyi monster as material. And Berserker of the Tenyi is a Link 3 Dark monster with 3000 attack, requiring any two or more monsters as material, including at least one Link monster. Both of them have no effect. 
These two form the basis of our deck's abilities to cycle away our effect monsters to keep our Tenyi Spirit special summons flowing. When you special summon a Tenyi Spirit, you can convert them into Monk. Now you have no effect monsters, so now you can special summon another spirit. Use your normal summon to get a third monster on board, and then you can link them all into Berserker, letting you special summon another Tenyi Spirit from your hand. Heck, that's a full access code line with two pops right there. They're very helpful in enabling our game plan, but I keep telling these people, you need to have a support class. When are you going to get Cleric of the Tenyi? I suppose Shaman of the Tenyi will have to pick up that slack. They're a Link 2 Fire Monster with 1600 attack, requiring two Worm Monsters as material. Once per turn, they can discard a card, then target a Worm Monster in your grave and special summon it. Also, for the rest of the turn, you can't activate the effects of monsters special summoned from the extra deck, except Tenyi monsters. Though, curiously, it doesn't stop you from summoning monsters outside that restriction. And when an attack is declared involving a face-up non-effect monster, you can target a card your opponent controls and destroy it. So not only can you use a card in hand for extension by getting back a Tenyi, you can also get some sick removal out of it. Being able to tack on some removal to your attacks is a free and easy way to get rid of powerful monsters and back row. And if you don't have a non-effect monster available, Shaman can summon up a fresh Tenyi that you can turn into Monk. I've gotta say, I'm a big fan. Draco Masters of the Tenyi is what happens when Monk and Shaman join forces. Look, their Link Arrows even line up. They're a Link 3 Light Monster with 2600 attack, requiring two or more monsters, including a Link Monster. Same as Berserker. Boy, the thematic connections just keep on coming. Draco Masters can't be destroyed by battle with an effect monster, so in most cases it might as well just be immune to battle destruction. And if you control no other effect monsters, you can destroy effect monsters your opponent controls up to the number of non-effect monsters you control and or are in your grave. It also doesn't lock you into anything after you use the effect, so as long as you meet the activation conditions first, you can pull the trigger on it, then follow up with the rest of your plays. And it doesn't target, so any monsters with that protection is in for a Rude awakening. But because Draco Masters is an effect monster, don't expect any assistance from your Tenyi Spirits. This co op mode only supports two players. Tenyi Spirit Sahasrara is a Link 4 light monster with 3000 attack, requiring two or more worm monsters as material. And while you control a face up non effect monsters, monsters your opponent controls can't target effect monsters for attacks, nor can effect monsters in general be targeted by your opponent's card effects. And as a quick effect, you can target an effect monster your opponent opponent controls and special summon a Tenyi Spirit token, which is a level 4 light worm monster with question mark attack and zero defense, with the attack being defined by the targeted monster's original attack. This summon, in turn, makes a Hasrara's protection live, because now you control a non-effect monster in the form of a token. And you get to do this for free every turn. And this targeting protection doesn't just extend to you, but your opponent's effect monsters as well. Now, that may sound like a big bowl of baloney, but it only prevents your opponent from targeting those monsters, which means you can still target them with Sahasrara, and your opponent can't target their own monsters with beneficial effects. Uh, I struggle to think of many meta-relevant cards this helps against at time of recording, but if your opponent is trying to use equip spells, or heaven forbid, something like Transmodify, then they're gonna have a hard time getting their spirits up. Our last extra deck monster veers away from Lynx and into the realm of Synchro. Draco Berserker of the Tenyi is a level 8 dark Synchro monster with 3000 attack and 0 defense, requiring generic material. When your opponent activates a monster's effect as a quick effect, you can banish it. You don't negate it, but it's certainly on its way out. And if this attacking card destroys an effect monster by battle and sends it to the grave, this card gains attack equal to the destroyed monster's original attack, also it can make a second attack on a monster during this battle phase. And while you only gain the extra attack for this turn, the attack gain is permanent, so you can reach some truly staggering heights of power with this, helping you to deal with fields that would otherwise be too difficult to handle. For instance, if Draco Berserker attacks into a monster and goes for its attack gain effect, the opponent's Borlode Savage Dragon might might have something to say about that. And while it'll successfully negate the attack gain and second attack, it'll be severely punished by Draco Berserker suplexing it into the banished zone. Which, you know, fair, I'd be pretty mad too if someone hit me with a combo breaker. Alright, that's all of our extra deck monsters, now it's time for the spells and traps. Vessel of the Dragon Cycle is a normal spell that sends a worm monster from your deck to the grave. Then, if you control a non-effect monster, you can add from your deck to your hand a Tenyi monster with a different name from the monster sent. 
This sets up your 10 effects while also giving you the material to extend your plays. You'll want to already have at least one 10 to summon so you can go into Monk to get the full value, but once you do, you can send a Shunna for an extra summon, or Vishuddha as removal. And once again, because it can send worms, it's not just for 10 You can do some wild stuff like setting up revivals, primarily with Sword Soul Sacred Summit. So, if you're not already playing this card, you really should take this cycle for a test drive. Heavenly Dragon Circle is a quick play spell that has you tributing a Worm Monster to add a Worm Monster from your deck to your hand. Or, if you tributed a non-effect monster to activate this card, you can special summon it instead, but negate its effects. And during your main phase, if you control a face-up non-effect monster, you can banish this card from your grave to add a 10 ye card from your deck to your hand. But you can only use one effect per turn, and only once per turn. So now now you can access any worm in your deck by tributing another, and you can put it to the field so long as it lacked an effect. And while Monk and Berserker can make for good targets, Sword Soul tokens are the best. While you are losing out on your tuner, you are getting out from under the Synchro only lock, opening up the ways for Link Summons, which is kind of the name of the game for Tenyi. And being able to search a Tenyi card with this on later turns is phenomenal, and will go a long way towards keeping your card economy stocked up so you can go for another around. Flawless Perfection of the Tenyi is a field spell that keeps all your non-effect monsters on the field unaffected by monster effects. And once per turn, if your opponent special summons any number of effect monsters while you control a face-down monster or non-effect monster, except during the damage step, you can draw two cards. So the funny thing about this card is, as Tenyi has developed, their power has been focused more and more into their effect monsters, which seems a bit ironic. You would generally want to use your materials to make Draco Master over Berserker. So for the big cards that run our deck, Flawless Perfection doesn't provide much protection, but it can net you a few draws if you summon Sahasrara. By making the token, your field spell becomes active, and it'll keep the token safe in return, giving you ample opportunity to get that sweet plus two. What can I say? Sometimes Flawless is Flaw more. Our last card is Fists of the Unrivaled Tenyi, a counter trap that can be activated in response to a spell card, trap card, or monster effect while you control a face-up non-effect monster to negate the activation, though it does not destroy. Disappointing, but uh... Hey, what can you do? Also, if this set card you control is destroyed by your opponent's card effect, you can special summon a non-effect monster from your extra deck. So it also acts as a mini waking the dragon. You can't get an absurdly powerful effect monster, but you can get some enormous non-effect ones, like Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. See, I told you we'd get back to this. It's a pretty nice Omni Negate for fielding some of your key monsters, and it doesn't have a hard once per turn clause, so the more you have, the more you can stop. Just a, you know, don't take the name too literally. I mean, there's a lot of rivaling going on in the art right here. Okay, so that's all the 10 ye cards, but what do we do with them? Well, we're pretty thin on control cards, but we have a wealth of cards that boost our consistency and power, not to mention our ability to go wild with material, so aggro is the way to go. Now, we've already covered how well this deck works with Sword Soul, but if we wanted to take the deck in a different direction, what can we play to help them out? While we haven't talked much about normal monsters, we shouldn't discount their contributions to our theme. One kind we could consider running to get the best of both worlds is Geminis. They're normal monsters on the field so they don't get in the way of your tenies, and would be protected by flawless perfection. And since they're also treated as normal monsters in the grave, each one makes Draco Master's destruction effect even more potent. And on the actual normal monster end, you have cards like Unexpected Die and Painful Decision to get your hands on them. My personal favorite being Angel Trumpeter, because if you have a level 4 Tenyi Spirit in hand, that's instant access to any level 8 Synchro, including Draco Berserker. You can also leverage cards like Instant and Ready Fusion. Both have some really nifty targets, including two tuners in Allvane and the Sea Monster of Theseus. And when you have the the most powerful monster in all of Yu-Gi-Oh at your disposal, how could anything go wrong? They also help put non-effect monsters on board so you can activate your Tenyi Spirit Banishing effects if you run out of ways to field a monster that will get their effects online. One archetype that I remember being added to Tenyi early on but hasn't seen much relevancy now 
is Metal Foes. A majority of their monsters are normal and non-effect, and with their impressive scales, they can pendulum summon your spirits out of your hand, even if you control an effect monster. And two of their fusions are non-effect monsters, giving them protection under flawless perfection. Not to mention their broad fusion materials gives them access to super polymerization, which is just about always a good tech card if your deck can support it. We also can't overlook our various synchro options, as an Adhara along with either Ashuna or Vishuddha gives us easy access to our level 8s. Baxia becomes a great way to spin two cards and potentially get more cards out of our grave. Borolode Savage Dragon is great once we get Berserker into the grave, as it'll go up to 4500 attack and get three turns worth of negations. And Psyframe Lord Omega not only helps rip cards out of our opponent's hands, but also returns our Tenyi Spirits from the Banished Zone to the grave so we can use the effect again. As for a silly tech pick, Try giving Lanferinkus a try. Now, we already have a very powerful Link 2 in Shaman, but if we use their effect to get a third material, then we can only use Worm effects from the extra deck for the rest of the turn, which means no access code effects. But if we have the material already in hand, we can keep summoning out our spirits by going through Lan, up to Berserker, up to access code. And then you get three total pops, because now you have an Earth, Light, and Dark Link monster in your grave. Hey everyone, uh, Editing Nova here, uh, just wanted to cut in here really quick and let you know to not listen to voiceover Nova uh, because he's a big silly dummy who doesn't know how link materials work. Uh, access code requires effect monsters, which Berserker is objectively not. Um, what can I say? After you see so many link combos going into a 5300 attack bungler with so many destructions, you kind of forget that's an important part of the sequence. Instead, try this silly tech pick, Nidhogg, Generator Boss of Ice. It's a worm monster, so it works with any worm-related effects, including Shaman of the Tenyi. And since that only locks you out of extra deck summoned monsters' effects, Nidhogg is still live. It gives you a way to stop inherent summoning, uh, your Xyz, your Synchros, your Links, all that good stuff. And because it's one of those generators that only require one tribute, you can use itself to clear the way for the special summon of your main deck Tenyis. And if you wanted to summon Nidhogg easily, you could use Generator Boss Stage. We've already talked about how Flawless Perfection isn't the best, and as it turns out, Boss Stage gives you a bunch of non-effect token monsters. And while they won't stick around long enough for you to be able to use Adhara, Ashuda, or Vishuna, if your opponent tries to target any of them, you can negate it with Mapura. And if your opponent looks at their 1500 stat line and goes, yeah, I can take that, you drop Nahada and reduce their attack by 1500 for a huge reversal. Shathana is almost a really good addition here, and while it doesn't specify the destroyed non-effect monster has to go to the grave, you do have to be able to target the destroyed monster. So until the game evolves to a point where we can target non-existent game pieces, we're gonna have to put this one on hold. And that's all I have to say about Tenyis. They're a powerful, unique set of cards that have, depending on your state of mind, unfortunately been folded into a much more powerful theme, being stripped of all its unyieldy components to fit into another deck. But in the end, that's part of what martial arts is all about, right? Finding out what works and what doesn't, shedding the unnecessary, and bolstering the rest. Honing your talent and skill to a razor's edge. Focus enough on improving yourself as a duelist, as well as your deck, and you'll find that it'll have a monumental effect on your win rate. But now, I want to hear what you all have to say. Are Tenyi the masters of the mixed martial art of dueling, or are they going to need some extra time to build up their chi? Let me know in the comments, and if you haven't already, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to show your support, ring that bell so you don't miss an episode, and share this video with someone you know who loves Yu-Gi-Oh! It really does a lot to help me out. Today's episode was brought to you by my lovely patrons, including this month's illustrious Quasar Commander, Ashling Waltz, Nebula Navigator's Third Dynasty, Ava Goule, Adam Zajdel, Biohazard011, Eric, Frankie, Genesis Yu-Gi-Oh, Gloomba331, Great Big Pillock, Howling Zangetsu, Inblink, Ironic, John Manji, Julius Sneezer, Larakia, Mighty Action X, Panther J, Rebel King Lucifer, Ruxith Sarani, Shooting Star 3300, The Fresh Prince of Conair, The Wizard Moose, Tyler Cranston and Xander Wolfensberger, Cosmic Crusaders, Bear Shark to Puss Studios, Chaz Ghost, Corbinisms, Cozy Boat 275, Harry the Ominous Benefactor, Jesus Garcia, Manga Pages, Marion James E. Picotta, Nitromo, RGS, 
Rem T. Bright and the Legendary Raven, as well as the wonderful Starlight Explorers you see on screen now. I'm only able to continue doing this thanks to the support of these lovely people, so if you'd like to be a part of these credits as well as help me in my journey to cover all of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s archetypes, please check out my YouTube membership or Patreon links in the description to see if I have anything you'd like on offer. And if you'd like to hear me talk about Tenyi's latest companions, check out this video I made covering Sword Soul as well as their lore. And if you want to see two Yugi tubers going at it, check out Noah Jenk and I's latest series progression polls, where your voice shapes the format. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.